The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. Uh, welcome back to the Maroon and White Pod. I'm Aoife Linsky. And I'm Martina Harkin. And how are you, my friend? I'm not too bad. Good. I still have the, the still bang have to the it. head. Well, at her. least this week I'm not blurred. She has decided to bring me in on the conversation. <laughs> I tried to blur it out so that they wouldn't have seen my head. Oh, yeah, yeah, but anyway, anyway, anyway. But to all the listeners and the watchers, you, you, you know what Aoife's like. Yeah. Listen, it's mean? been yeah. it's been a it's been a tough weekend for, yeah. for Galway Camogie, Aoife, even though it was a brilliant weekend of camogie in general it was from from the intermediate final to or the junior final the intermediate final i think but i have to say a sad month for galway sad like month, yeah, the four hours four yeah four, four, four. The under 16s the footballers oh, yeah, of course, and, yeah, can't forget that. keep forgetting the girls so yeah but do you know what you'd be just so proud of them they died with their boots on um you know they went in as underdogs they did but not to us because no. anyone that's well, been asking anyone us to we always say, anyone know. that knows anything about camogie and yeah, Galway would, would know, know that, that they, they were in with a chance quality they yeah. showed serious um efficiency resilience you know to claw back yeah. from being nearly dead and buried uh, to come within inches to come within seconds and just of, the, the, of the not getting over the final few minutes and yeah. just maybe the few missed chances but so delighted to who we have on tonight. Absolutely. Uh, and we met her. I saw her. She was flying by me above in the, the media section on Sunday. The press box. And I, I was saying to myself, I wonder what you know who I am. And I just chanced me over and I said, how are you, Kate? And she said, how are you, Martina? Nice but one. But we, we, we crossed paths. But look, at um, it's fantastic to have uh, Kate Kelly with us. And we're going to get Aoife to, to introduce uh, well, Kate. So tell us all about her. Well, I, I tried like... To narrow it down, narrow so we're not here for 20 minutes talking about it. To, to one. Nine All-Stars, four All-Irelands, um, Player of the Year. She's got so many different awards down, like down along a um, couple of county titles with her club as well. I think they got to the All-Ireland at one stage. You might have they did, stopped yeah. them in the tracks. 2001, yeah, yeah. Pierce's and St. Ivers went out. I'm, I'm sure she's not crying about that one. She, sure, she, sure she sure has she's not. broke our hearts three times in a row. Absolutely. Um, and what else have I here? Um, she, her mom is a role model. I just think that's lovely. I think it's you wonderful. Know? And yeah. her mom is um, Peggy Doyle. She won all Ireland as well. Absolutely. Her family are steeped in history, but anyone that knows Anthony about Camogie down in Wexford and even um, a neighbour of ours here, Jason McHugh, is from Wexford. That's right. And he was in some, there was the, what you call the flowers on this week, last week oh, in the Wexford. Here, and he yeah. said he was in some pub or whatever and he's seen this jersey with all the All-Stars that I, and he didn't realise that Kate Kelly had so many All-Stars. So there you go, Kate. Oh, yeah. And one thing about her is she she talks camogie, she tells it as it is, and nine times out of ten she's always right. Yeah, and she slipped away quietly. Absolutely. Yeah, we we'll talk about we'll that. We'll talk about but, that. But uh, Kate, you're delighted very to welcome. have you. How are you doing? Delighted to join you, ladies. Not, no doubt it is a tough week for Galway, but I uh, know I'm delighted to join you, and thanks for that. And thanks, a million. And look, at you were busy on Sunday. I know you were up there with um with Joanne and and Sarah. I think you were on RT. Um, on RT Radio and look at you're a wonderful advocate as, as Aoife said you're all that's good about Camogie and uh, what a better woman to, to talk about the game on Sunday than, than someone that was there and, and watched it well as we say up here you're class yeah legend <laughs> I said you know uh, what did they say skill is temporary but class, class, is, is, class permanent. is permanent but there was I mean, stop now and we'll just go to the match <laughs> <laughs> we have to be nice yeah, to you no, not at all no. No. look at on, on, on a note maybe start with where do, where where do you, you think it all went right for Cork and I suppose wrong for Galway yeah well, your verdict on the game well first I would say Sunday was a huge um like promotional camogie what a game it was like to be fair um got Cork were coming into that game um hot favorites that won as everyone had alluded to by so much but I did say in the interview with Joanne and, and Sarah Galway to be fair to him up until last year had beaten Cork eight consecutive times and they didn't go away overnight like and they had beaten them earlier in the year in the league and like I suppose maybe the biggest thing for Cork was they came in with a load of confidence, I think, and they came in with that team spirit that was consistent all year and a huge confidence, whereas that was questioned a lot with Galway, I thought, mm. leading into the final, that, you know, their game against Waterford, probably people questioned that they only stumbled over the line and Waterford probably could have taken them. And the same in the semi-final against Tip, like they were into injury time and they were a point down. But to me, that probably showed character. But you probably didn't see their team spirit, their fight, their determination, like you seen last Sunday, I thought. Mm -hmm. And um, what a game they, they put out there. Like, I think Cork, you know, they went out on the field, as I said, with the confidence. They went out in their 
line up as they had all year. So probably a little bit more to read from a Galway point of view. And no one knew what kind of Galway was going to come. Everyone was hoping they'd come to the field like they did. And I think, I think, I think it was a game of inches to me. And that's how Cork got over the line. I thought their bench, you know, probably got the points and the scores when they got the opportunities. It opened up for them. And that probably is what got Cork over the line. But you talk about inches and in games. And I think it was the bare, the bare inches that got Cork over the line. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything exceptional that they did. Or you couldn't say they were 100% the better team on the day. To me, the two teams went out there and fought to the bitter end. And it was a super final, like. Yeah, and I'd agree both, with you. Yeah. They both had their um, areas of purple patches. Yeah. And like uh, Cork went six up, was it six up at one stage? And then Galway kind of plowed their way back into and, it. And yeah. said six points in a row. So I thought, yeah. geez, here we are. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, the, the second half was definitely a game of, of three, 10 minutes, like the first 10 Wasn't minutes. Oh, Cork. my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. They blew them off the field. And, and you would you would have questioned how Galway were going to come back. Like they scored one four with no reply. And right. And you know, but Galway did, they dug deep, they got the next 10 minutes, they brought back level and everyone was just so excited for that last 10 minutes, weren't they? Like yeah. it was, uh, oh, it was level, yeah. even Stevens, but the last 10 minutes was such a, like there was a couple of players went down, got their ankles strapped, there was a few stoppages, it, it was, disrupted yeah. it and I think it kind of fell in Cork's favour. They definitely got the rub of the green in the last 10 minutes. Like, you know, what happened um, with, it was definitely something because we were looking down, obviously we were up quite high, um, but when we were looking down, there was a substitution and they were on and they were off and it was nicely played like by them. But that time it wasn't that high. It could have been tactics. Tactics well, probably. But, know, um, you know. but these guys, we won't be talking about we've called, we won. You know? 100% the last 10 minutes I, I I thought that as well like between the substitutes coming on and the few injuries I think yeah. Sarkin McCartan went down with the ankle and I think there was someone from Galway as well um, yeah. and the boots came off and it just disrupted that yeah, last okay. 10 minutes a little bit and, and it you know, but it didn't take from it, no doubt, but it did disrupt the last 10 minutes a little bit, you know. Definitely Especially did, yeah. when the momentum was kind of going in, in Galway's favour as such, you know what I mean? Because as you said, Kate, they had clawed themselves back into it the last third quarter. And it was the six minutes of injury time that, that was the difference. And to me, mm -hmm. which is the next thing I was going to ask you, possibly where Galway fell short, maybe the last six minutes. Yeah, I, I think the Galway fell short. I suppose maybe in that last six minutes, they were like, you, you can't say that the opportunities did present. They got a couple of chances. They well, probably they did, weren't yeah. the easiest chances to take. Um, I thought Carrie was a little bit out. Maybe hit it probably too quick. I don't know. Um, she had scored one from that angle a little bit earlier. Neve Mallon got a chance. But I did think in that last 10 minutes, they probably could have got a free or two on the top of the D. I thought they got three frees against them in the last 10 minutes um, in the closing stages of the match that like kind of knocked them back a good bit and Absolutely. the momentum kind of swung in Cork's favour. And I thought the eagerness of Galway to get those scores pushed the play up and, and probably crowded that. And the likes of Cloda and Sarka found a lot of space in front of they them did, in the yeah. last six minutes. And that's yeah. where the probably two points came out. But... They probably were very, very unlucky on those couple of calls there on the top of the D. I thought three frees in a row. I probably would have thought two of them probably could have been Galway frees. Um, but maybe it was where Liz was standing. Uh, one of them, you know, she was on the opposite side and it probably did look like Neve was going head first into a player from where I was. It looked yeah. like she got a bit of a push. Um, but when I look back on it, Liz was on the far side. I was on the near side. So you could see maybe how she picked it up like that. I but think there was a photo actually of games. Yeah, there was a photo actually of that um actual tackle, and it looks obviously it, it kind of looks like Neve is going bullheaded yeah. into it. Yeah. So you see, it's so like with referees, and obviously we don't want to be talking about the referees, but I I, I mean she's getting absolutely lambasted on social media, and I suppose people need to understand she's human as well. And but when it comes down to the finer details, and especially when it's an All Ireland final and you've been training for months and months, no. Like, I thought she had okay, like in the first half, she was actually quite for Galway in the first half, I thought. But then it seemed to really turn. And as you said, the crucial scores, when they were freeze, do you know. But that's not taken away from Cork's game now, but she is, she's getting lambasted. But had it an impact, you think, on the game? Well, you could say it did, but you also could say she played a big part in it being a great final. Like, and yeah, like, she did because she let it go. The, the hurling final as well, lads, and and the last call of the match where um the tug of the jersey and you could yeah. talk about like the referee yeah. had a big part in it being a great game too. And I don't know if she should get all that 
you know, the controversial goal. Yeah. I think without VAR, there's no way in the world I think any umpires would have Absolutely. seen that or called that. And, and it's, it's that's something kind of possibly the, look of the draw, I think. Yeah. And it's something yeah. possibly the association you should look into it because she only has two eyes. Well, I can't still figure it out. And I've, I've looked at it a hundred times now. And I'm like, we, 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 we were talking about it as camogie players. And like, if it happened to us in a match, and if I was going through it with a ball or you were going through, and you, you you threw it up to strike it, and it's not it, irrelevant of who's playing. I would have thought that it was actually in a, a legit goal. Yeah. She, yeah. she did go up to hit it. Maybe I a legit think, I don't know. accidental It's goal. called accidental, yeah, isn't it? it's called maybe a legit accidental You goal. had the rule, you found yeah, the actual rule. The rule. Yeah, but like, if you think about it, think about uh, uh, Katrina Mackey. So Amy O'Connor had passed it to her. Amy was possibly yeah. fouled as well. <clears throat> Liz probably let it go. Came to Katrina Mackey. Katrina threw it up to strike. with the intention to strike it. again. She was met with Sarah Healy, the goalie, and it just trickled over the It just went in, and Anya Kane was coming, bulldozing in. Anya went to swipe as well. She missed it. Umpires didn't react. Galway players didn't react. And that was it. Job done. Game goes goes on. So maybe I suppose it depends on what side, Kate, you're from. From a Cork perspective, it's lucky, a goal. It's a goal. From a Galway yeah. perspective, we're ready to kill people. Yeah, it wasn't legit <laughs> to me. Yeah, no, I, I think when you say it like that, Martine, it makes a good case for Both she sides. didn't intentionally throw it no. into the goal. She intentionally threw it up to strike it, strike and it. handed in the goal. And with kind of, could you say it was a penalty? Maybe you could argue that point of seeing possibly. I think it was that. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think there was that an intentional from a referee or umpire point of view. Yeah. Like people didn't miss it on purpose. It's it's one that you could only really call when you look back and look back when on you look it. Back. I, was, I was saying this. Uh, in fairness to Liz, she was on the twenty one coming in, so she could only see it from her point of view. And you see, it's all very well with twenty eight thousand people in Crow Park yeah. looking back that evening and saying, "Oh my God, what's the actual written?" Because it does say, obviously, you're not allowed to score a goal with the hands. There is a, ri- there is a written a, an actual written. <clears throat> Like she did try to strike, so we're, but here we are. It's kind of like that uh, film Sully. Do you remember yeah. that one where they went over and over with simulators? Like we're looking at it and looking at, it and we still can't. So we're trying it, to expect the referee or umpires yeah. to see it really quickly. Just Sorry. just reading the rule, it said a goal is scored when the Schlitter is played by either team over the goal line between the goal post Wait, and no. under the crossbar, <laughs> except when carried in the hand by the attacking player over the goal line or thrown over the goal line by any player. Now, it was thrown, thrown. but not intentionally. But well, it has it to thrown to strike and she was, you could say, she wasn't allowed to strike. Oh, it wasn't allowed. But and I, I both, still say it goes back to the same thing, like the look of the draw right. and, you know, there's the fine inches in matches. Yeah. You can go back yeah. over every match you've ever played and any tight match where you've won or lost by a point, you and could argue a margins. couple of questions. Of you course. could oh, argue shit. a couple of referees' decisions in it. So to me, she she probably was consistent the whole way through the match and probably let a little bit more go towards the end. Um, she did, and like, questionable did. freeze. Yeah. Probably. But then but, you, yeah. And then we're always arguing, we're saying that uh, Camogie is whistle happy. And now someone is letting it go. No, she, no, she, she let, let it go. go. She was living on the edge now, in fairness. She was her. living on the edge. And, and, and as I said, <laughs> the last couple of minutes, she could have blown. Anne-Marie Starr was taken completely out of it by Laura Hayes. Yes. To me, it possibly was a red card. And Ellie Hesnan. And Ellie Hesnan got that a one, serious yeah. belt. And there were two in front of goal. And as you said, Kate, that could have brought that back to one point and anything is possible then. But I think if they had got a score at that point, it would have settled them back in because they they started to play the ball down the middle um, at that point. And they had been kind of playing it wide and and spreading Cork team out and Mm. kind of Ashling and Laura were sitting in that pocket at that stage. And, you know, like, but it's all ifs, buts buts and maybes. But yeah, um, ifs, buts, maybes. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that we don't have O'Duffy, unfortunately. Yeah, and it is an unfortunate after such, you know, three weeks in a row for Galway. It's very hard to take with such a spirited performance like a spirit that you hadn't seen all year and absolutely they, they saved yeah. the best for less yeah. yeah you'd be proud to say if you're from Galway with their performance on, on yeah no we Monday. are we're very proud of them because at the beginning of the championship they just weren't gelling and just the, the half back line was yeah but you know, the half back line was kind of uh, changing up every every game well, I, I didn't suppose, know where they were playing that's testament maybe to Cahal and his management team they were obviously trying, trying out new players because you know the whole world and its mother thinks that Galway are in, in are in a transition 
conditioning mode and they're mm. trying to blend the little bit of youth with experience and that's encouraging so maybe they weren't playing their cards or their full deck to me I think Cork got the smoother run of the green for this year's championship whereas Galway had the tougher and every game that Galway played there was tight margins but no team right. could actually put the screw on them Kate so they were able to get over the line Absolutely. in the last nine minutes so maybe they thought they had the same resilience that to helped do them that though. again against Cork but again yeah. it was down to those crucial decisions at crucial times and I think Cork unloading the bench which brings us to our next thing oh yeah like obviously we've talked about this match in like in depth about where did it go wrong or where did it go right and then we're we're trying to kind of convince ourselves no it's it's okay but we we do think myself and Harkley think that it was possibly the impact the, of Cork the impact had on of the bench, bench. Yeah. yeah but the time that they came on do you know when Galway had scored six points in a row that's yeah. the time we said right into the bench get in new legs and just throw it out there but we didn't we waited till the um, when did Orla McGregor go on? I think it was around the it was injury time. It, the majority yeah, of the six came on in yeah, yeah, maybe like fifty eight or the Neve Nyland came on at sixty second minute and then Ellie has sixty six. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, I it, suppose at that stage maybe they thought it's do or die. Do you know what I mean? Too late at that stage. Yeah. But look at yeah, they had probably, it probably doesn't give you an opportunity as a sub. Um no, yeah, I'm looking at it here. It was the 48 minute like you do need to 15 Orla, 20 yeah. minutes for Orla but when Orla came on she went right into the full forward line and she didn't really get any ball in there like no, she, she probably nothing. needed to come on in the half the forward line. line and then Neve Nyland was very late it was on the it was in injury time actually when Neve yeah, came the on 62nd um, minute or something and Ali was around she the might even touch a ball like to be honest I suppose you'd want 10 or 15 minutes at oh, the pace absolutely. of the game you want to be running up and down the sideline and, and Neve was on the sideline for a long time waiting for a break and play and I suppose Galway hadn't scored for 10 or 15 back, minutes either and going back to what you said Kate in the last in the dying minutes of the game all of Galway were nearly up in their own or in the car in, her, in the forward space yeah. which meant that Laura I suppose Laura Tracy had the opportunity to grab the ball and drive it up and there was acres of space then for Surika and for Claude Finn. I thought they were two major brilliant and, mm. and Surika made it look so easy but the fresh legs Fresh legs, and, and to me, that was the ultimate uh, the impact of the Cork bench, I suppose, secured the win. Well, the fresh legs, but they also had so much space. Like, Galway were yeah. so eager to get that score, and they had a run with Cloda and Sarkin. Like, at that point, I don't know where they got it, but they got the space and they got two sweet balls in in front of Mount, you know, right yeah. in front, the way a corner forward or full forward would want. Would the love ball it. Over. Yeah. You know, it's very hard to defend that, like when a ball comes in perfect to the to the full forward line, you oh, know. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And it's just such a pity because it, it was a wonderful that was a great was a wonderful showcase. Wasn't and it? it was a fantastic day for all the the young players. Like there was twenty eight thousand or something in Cork Park, but it was all young girls, and I think they were fantastic role models, both sides, both from Cork and 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 from Galway. And it's just such a pity that sport can be so cruel at that cruel. level, isn't it? Well, without a doubt, I think that's the hardest thing when you go and you you go and you prove against the odds that we are, we do have a team spirit, we are connected, we're not in transition. We went out and did a, a, a performance from the word go, like even the first few minutes, I think Cork went out and got the first two points um, within three minutes and you were like, oh God, are they going? And, and then all of a sudden, like the match yeah. just took off, like were, it was exactly. so and God, we just turned it on. Yeah. And, like, I totally thought it was point at halftime. And I thought the matchup with Laura Hayes and uh, Neve Mallon, I thought that was brilliant. And I was disappointed to see her, even though she's dangerous when she's in the full forward line, you know, in the second half that they shoved her right in. I thought she had the better of Laura Hayes for the first half and Laura Hayes kind of came into her own then for the second half. So these are changes. But look at as a management team, you have to throw the book at it oh, and, and see how it goes. Yeah. I did think, think the Galway team. management was a stroke of genius. Like they went out, they they, you know, they took a big chance even putting Alwyn back on yeah. Saoirse. I don't think I don't know if she's yeah. ever played in the backs before. I don't I think so, but I think she was given a job. And then taking the chance of putting Eve Mallon in the half forward line, like it was, it, it was, worked. it was, it did work. And they it had worked until they changed it back again. Yeah, but it, like Neve Hannafy had gone in, she had gone in full forward, and she was kind of playing around the the half back line, centre back. You know, in the last couple yeah. of games as well. And so look, she's we, able to play forward. She's able, so and I, can, you know, I can't, I can't um, not talk on the pod about Eva Donahue. Donahue, I thought she was absolutely fantastic. 
you know, for a small woman, she's some woman, as they say, and those four points that she scored, you know, you wouldn't see any man scored in Croke Park. And I think that was, again, testament to management. They gave her that bit of a free role uh, to do what Suits she does her. best. Yeah, and someone had to mark her. Yeah. It's just yeah, such no. a pity that she's such a tenacious, tough cookie that, you know, the other big guns couldn't bring a little bit more with them and get them over the line. But you look at, as we said already, that sport, isn't it? We, we probably sound like we're very, obviously, we're obviously for, from Galway but, because, but you can't take away from Cork's win as well. Do you know? No, and you, you can't, but the likes of, I, I think, even like you say there, like the likes of Kira Hickey had a great game. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant had in the week. a super game on, on Saturday. And Ailish O'Reilly played yeah. very well up to that point. I don't know whether it was just fresh legs onto the yeah. field. I'm sure as yeah, why she, was, she was going really well. Yeah, she scored two points from play. Like, yeah. Maybe they saw something else that, that we didn't see. Yeah. But it's, it's like they say, it's just get the fresh legs on too for that. For the bump, that's true. You know, but that was but, was that at the forty eight minutes? You would yeah, have thought, it was, it was yeah, close to half time, yeah. But as you said, not much ball went in then to kind of Orla McGrath. So look at, I'd say we could stay talking about till the cows come home, but it'll still be depressing well, tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> but it was the the positives for Galway. We were looking at the stats and we were saying like that they had a hundred percent scoring efficiency in the first half. They had ten shots. 10 points, no whites. So if it's any consolation prize, I thought that they just, did well. that as Kyle Murray would say himself, they died with their boots on. They gave it everything. They came up short. And unfortunately, that's just that's just the way it goes, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think, will there be much changes now? Obviously, we don't know yet what's what's happening. Or do you think, will anything happen in the Galway camp? Like, we haven't heard if, if, anything if yet. If you were Kyle Murray, how would you, how would you react? Now? Well, I don't know. Like, was the rumors that he like he was going to go at the start of this year? Like, it is his sixth season in charge. Like, to me, yeah. like what he did this year, like how the girls turned out in the All Ireland final is a testament to him as a manager. And yeah, being there six be years, that can't be easy either. Like, um, they yeah. weren't in it the last two years, so, um, you know, yeah, I, I suppose it's. I'd say it's it's this is his toughest one. I'd say like to to swallow, especially like you said when they were really really excited, and I'd never seen him so delighted after kind of getting into the final. You know, it was it was like a monkey off their back again, but now to be kind of at the wrong side of it again. Mm. It's a massive undertaking for a oh. manager too. It's a serious commitment. commitment. It's Seriously. not just yourself, it's your family you have to think about. And I'm sure this week is, isn't is a week, week that he's it, going yeah. to make no. a decision. But whatever decision he makes, he has nothing, um, I suppose, when you think about it. Well, whatever <laughs> decision to he prove. Makes, he's nothing to prove. He's, no, he, he hasn't doesn't. let fall all the way down. And look at whatever will be, will be. And I'm presuming that Jer Manley will stay on. He was there with Matthew Toomey mm-hmm. last year. And, you know, I suppose when you're winning, it's easy to stay on. But in fairness, Matthew Toomey as well and Germanley took take over, like they just come in, take it over for a year, win it and exactly, go. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, and go again. Yeah, as Matthew said, that's what he did with him on it. Maybe on that's it. where Fitzy's gone. Maybe Antrim's only ah, a five. Yeah, well. <laughs> How are, you, how are you fixed? Are you going into management, Kate? Are, are so you I'll, I'll stay local for the minute. Stay I'll local, still, I suppose. Still in this yeah. Log, yeah. It are, you training, are you training any of the underage? Training the under eights, or do oh. a bit with the under eights, and then do a bit with the adult team as well. So, team, well, yeah. they do say keep your best coaches with your, with your, with your nursery ones, and yeah. your young ones. So, that here they have it right in your club. So, yeah, exactly, know, exactly. But look, at, I suppose to, to finish it off, I suppose it's tears of joy and tears of heartbreak. And, you know, if anything, they just they give a great display of camogie. It was a joy to watch from from Man, a Galway perspective. Brilliant. Absolutely gutted, but as a neutral, I'm sure you thought it was a fine game. As a neutral, it was a super um was. advertisement for camogie. Like it, it really was. The three games on Sunday were, but the senior game was super. From you just couldn't take your eyes off from you start to finish between yeah. the movements and when you were at it, like you, like I was totally intrigued with the tactical battles, the tactical awareness oh, they were brilliant. What was going on around yeah. the field in in one end when the ball was in the other end. You were nearly watching what was going on. So. It it had everything. I think um it was it was a really it was a really great advertisement for Camogie and yeah. Chris the girls had all performed. I'd say they were all fairly battered and bruised on one day. Where we saw a lot of them last night. Yeah, we went to see them last night. Yeah, yeah. Gutted, and They're tired and drawn and just 
I'd say just out down and out, but look and at a bit out of sorts because yeah, they just they don't know what to do now. Do you know that type way that they get ready now to get back into club championship two weeks yeah. where they go and tear the heads of each other? So that's, that's, that's right. right. There'll yeah. be no, be no a, tearing the heads. Oh, there'll so be, there'll be, be loads of that. But listen, <laughs> look at we're we're so appreciative to you for for taking the time out, Kate, and keep doing what you're doing. And please, God, our paths will uh, will cross again. Thanks a million, and Thank God you. bless you. Thanks right. a million, Kate. Thanks okay. a million. We'll see yes, you soon. Yeah. Mind yourself. Bye. 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 And bye. Jackie Hurley had a great um, quote on, on Kate. She said, if King or if Henry Shefflin is the king, well, then Kate well, Kelly, then is, Kate the Kelly queen. is the queen. I so, hope she heard that. Yeah, Kate I hope Kate. she did hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so fair play. Thanks but a million, Kate. Great to her. No, oh, wonderful. Wonderful. And, uh, he calls a spade a spade and look at... Like yourself. <laughs> well, you, sometimes you have to and it's the only way. But I just feel that they did everything. They couldn't have done couldn't anything do more. And a few a silly bit of look, decisions a bit of look. went against them. Very disappointed maybe on some of the decisions that were made. And at the end of the day, you know, you can't go back. But it's something that the association should seriously consider. How many times have we, we said, like, two referees? <clears throat> but then you see, Harky, you have to think, there still was, I know I'm going back to the goal again, there still was two umpires. There was two umpires. And there was players, like the goal players didn't react. It and was the, going in 100 miles an hour. And Emery Hayes said it last night on the Sunday game and she made a great point. Not last night, sorry, Sunday night. I keep yeah. thinking last night. Is that the two umpires didn't react. The two Galway players yes, didn't, didn't react. react. And I know it's very easy to say, well, why didn't they put their hands up? But with yeah. the run of the game, sure, sure, kind of it just resumed. Like, yeah. like, I'm sure Anya, when, when Katrina Mackey threw the ball up, Anya wasn't thinking she was going to throw this ball into the goal. Anya was going to block it. Yeah. And just unfortunately couldn't get the hurl in time. And possibly, if anything, it, it should have been a penalty. Because yes, so maybe Sarah maybe maybe the outcome her. wouldn't have been any different. Exactly. So maybe until the AR maybe cup. comes into yeah. it and maybe have a few eyes in, in the sky. But look at that's life. And I suppose next week it's back to club championship and um we'll 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 talk, well, we'll about, talk that about that next week. Next week. Suppose, but, but um we'll chat well really quickly about <clears> the junior game. Um Tipperary, Tipperary yeah. had a, a and again. Ty More Carl there, controversial Carl, again. Yeah, Carl yeah. Collins, reffing it, Galway ref, and we were actually talking to Carol coming down. And he said it was a foul. So he foul said it was a foul, foul and and he did he did say and 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 I'm sure right there's no him. problem. Uh, uh, quoting is that he did he did he let the game go on and they had another minute or two leash to to get back into the game and the foul was right in front of him. But it's a hard way to go to lose. But yeah, I know you like to when a game is that tight, you nearly say, "Oh, geez, blow, blow it off for a draw." <laughs> yeah. know, but unfortunately, and then obviously uh, and the same with Kenny and, and Cork. Cork. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah I mean, it was all controversials in even yeah. though they were. But what a showcase on the 128th anniversary. Absolutely, and just. And to say too about the the grades, when well, speaking of the grades, the junior, the intermediate, and the senior, you could see the step say, up though, couldn't you? You could Tiny see bit, the step up, not as much bit, as before, not as much as before, and the gaps are getting that little bit tighter. Yeah. Which brings us to before we go, that supposedly the intermediate championship is no more. No, the intermediate and the junior championship yeah. is no more for second. Uh, so God, we have an intermediate team; they will not be allowed to win that intermediate, intermediate championship, championship. Next year. So it's really for teams that don't play senior. So the two teams that won it are. The the two teams that can't win it again. They so can't look win it again. Yeah. So such a fight. That's the best to look that, to leash again going forward. And but to if, obviously, Kilkenny. Yeah, oh, they won't she, be able to. No, they won't. No. If she and said it on the Sunday game, it's yeah. it's there, but no one really knows the ins and outs of it. So until the Camogie Association come out and, and maybe state that officially, um, we won't know anything. No, but we look don't. at before we go. Um, it was good crack. Up was, we got we had a bird's eye view, guys. Up, up, up in the press box, we were, we were up. Very we were high and mighty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, high and mighty. We're very privileged yeah, to be uh, involved in off the ball this week. Um, I I was involved during the week myself and Linda Mellerick and and Eve for them was given live updates with news talk. So it was so a big great shout out to Jonathan and Ashton. Great, good old crack. Exactly. He was stealing my notes. And a big shout all day. out to all day, um, Jonathan, to the stewards up in in the media section, <clears throat> and particular one oh, guy. Porrick. Uh, Porrick, who's 44, 44 years, years yeah. uh, working as a steward in Croke Park, and he's supposedly retired. But I he's think not, we convinced he's not. him. Stay on for another year. We did. I think we convinced him. Convinced him otherwise. <laughs> we'll have to try and sneak up there. We will. We'll try and get up there again. <laughs> but look, it, it is, was a um, massive weekend for Camogie, heartbreak for Galway. Uh, they have nothing to be ashamed of. We're so proud, proud of Cahill mm-hmm. and all the management and all the players. And I'm sure, please God, it's not a week for Cahill to be making any decisions. But whatever decision he made, I'm sure Galway Camogie will support him in his endeavours. So it's goodbye from me, my friend. And goodbye from me, my friend.